Hello guys and welcome back to another Paint.net tutorial! Yay, it's back! Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a bunch of stuff. I'm going to be doing a couple of requests that you guys have been requesting and I am also just going to do a bunch of normal stuff that I have discovered. That's right, I've actually discovered some new cool things in Paint.net that I would actually like to show you because I've not yet uh, showed you these things. So first of all, I would actually like to uh, thank everyone for a thousand subscribers. A video uh, has already, or will, actually come out. Uh, a special thank you video featuring some cool things that I'm doing for a thousand subscribers. Uh, also, I would like to tell you guys that I'm a little bit short on requests. So if you post a request in this video, or any video, any paint on uh, tutorial whatsoever, I am going to read that comment, and I will make all of the requests eventually into videos. However, I am a little bit short on them, as I previously said at the moment, so if you want to know how to do something paint on it, just post it in the comment section, and I shall be happy to do that. Also, I have been receiving uh, quite a few requests regarding YouTube stuff, YouTube avatars, YouTube banners, like gaming stuff, and, and just general like gaming YouTube banners, so I thought for my next Paint on Ed tutorial, I do like a YouTube special in which I only do YouTube Paint on Ed related things, like I'm going to show you how to do like a YouTube icon, a YouTube gaming banner, so stay tuned for that, uh, that should be coming in about two weeks, hopefully, if I get everything right, because that that would uh, that tutorial would take uh, quite a bit. It probably will be about like 25 minutes long. So let's begin the tutorial. Right. So I'm going to show you some cool stuff that you can do in Paint.net uh, and some more like complex tools that you can use. So the first thing I'm actually going to show you is the shape selection tool. Now this tool just makes a random shape, as I showed you in the very first Paint.net tutorial that I did. But there are actually so a couple of options right here which allow you to select a different type of shape tool. So for example, if I've got the square uh, shape tool selected and I actually click this little circle and square, it actually changes it to like a little fill tool which fills the entire uh, square shape with, uh, with your little black uh, colour that you've got as your primary colour. Now as for this one, uh, the next one if you click your little selection tool again, uh, this actually makes a, a black outline over the secondary colour, which is white. Uh, allow me to show you that if you actually change over your second, your primary colour to, I don't know, red, and your secondary colour to yellow, it actually makes a uh, red and yellow square. So that's pretty cool, it's a bit like uh, the original MS Paint stuff. And if you click it again, it just brings you back. And now let's just make a new layer, and what I am going to be showing you now is uh, using this little selection tool, I'm going to select the fill thing, uh, <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it, the, the fill thing, because uh, I'm very poetic, and, and now I'm going to show you some cool new selection techniques that I've discovered. Now the, these are the selection modes, and if you click your circle or whatever, wh whichever one of these select tools you can actually go to it, now, by default, your selection tool should be on replace. So, uh, but the, basically what this does, if I make a new selection, this replaces the previous one, and I can just make a bunch of selections and maybe delete uh, part of the square that I selected using the delete button. But if I actually uh, make a uh, replace selection, uh, by obviously not changing anything and just making a normal selection, and actually changing the selection while I still got it selected to add uh, brackets union, this actually adds to your selection. Now this is really cool. You can actually just expand your selection if you uh, didn't think your uh, primary selection was good enough. So if you don't feel that your primary selection, the area of your primary selection was big enough, you can just add to it and expand it like the border of some sort of magnificent nation. And now if you select uh, a default replace selection once again and click on subtract, this actually removes from your selection. So if you wanna, if you wanna sort of uh, not enlarge, but actually decrease the size of your selection, or maybe just make a couple of holes in your selection, maybe you've selected something and you, you just wanna like remove a bit of the selection that you created because you regret doing that, you can do that using the actual subtract tool. So let's just undo all of this using the undo arrows. Now this selection is actually slightly more complex. Now if you just make a normal replace selection and click intersect, this actually uh, replaces uh, a selection of your original selection. So th this kind of looks like a Venn diagram. You can also like do it with a square. I can't really explain this. I mean, you really just have to take a look uh, to be able to um, 
know what it does so if you just make a square selection and click intersect this actually makes a smaller square if you intersect with that previous selection so there you go that's pretty interesting and now we come to the final selection so if you go to replace and actually go to selection mode and go to invert this actually inverts parts of that selection now in some sense it is actually a bit like the subtract selection but the subtract selection can't actually invert some of these selections so if you actually go to invert and you've got things not selected if you go to invert it actually selects part of the area that is actually not selected so basically if you've got an area that's not selected it's going to select it and if you've got an area that is selected it's going to undo that I can actually show you guys a really cool thing that I discovered involving brush selections. Now if you actually go to your brush tool and go to this little fill option, you can actually get a whole bunch of cool little s of patterns and selections that you can actually use to fill your brush. Now if I just go to, I don't know, dashed downward diagonal and just increase my, increase my brush size using the, bracket, using the uh, upper bracket key, I can actually do this, make like a cool pattern brush selection and you can actually do this oops I actually uh, undid that you can actually do this with the shapes and stuff that I pre previously showed you you can switch it to a whole bunch of different selections oh god that looks a bit weird you can actually switch over your primary and secondary color to make it a different color let me just demonstrate that a little bit better and there you go you can make a whole bunch of cool little patterns there you go look at this now this is actually something cool I discovered paint on it earlier, but I didn't actually know uh, what it would be useful for. And now the final little cool thing that I discovered in paint on it is the fact that now I didn't actually know about this previously. That your left mouse button corresponds to your primary color, and your right mouse button corresponds to your secondary color. Now you can do a whole bunch of cool things with this. You can actually do left click, right click, left right, left right, and just make like a cool little weird optical illusion esque pattern. You can also actually just increase your brush size all the way to 500, and keep holding the bracket key and just do left right, left right. Now depending on how quickly you switch from left and right, it actually make, makes the colours um, thicker and thinner. So if you, I just do it really quickly as you can see, that makes like a little, uh, again, optical illusion-esque little pattern. So that's like a really cool thing. And now obviously you can, you can actually switch the secondary and primary colour with this as well. So if you just want to increase your brush size all the way to 85 and just do left right and left right again so this is pretty cool uh, you can actually switch from uh, your secondary color to your primary color really conveniently so yeah I hope that helped you guys in some stuff some endeavors that you were trying to achieve now what would a good old paint on that tutorial be without good old Boris Johnson's face now what I'm going to be showing you now is how to change the color of an eye now I've actually been promising you guys that I was going to do this for two tutorials now and now I've actually finally gotten around to doing it and I found the perfect picture of our good old mayor of London uh, that is, would be perfect to, to change his eye color Okay, so the way you do this is actually select, first of all, your lasso tool. And now you've actually, using your control and uh, mouse wheel, got to zoom in right into his face and just uh, select uh, his eye using the lasso select. So you've actually got to select his eyes just one by one and you've actually got to make sure to make this selection quite accurate and you've got to make sure not to have too much of the whites of his eyes added into this selection so I'm just going to try and make it as accurate there you go I think that's pretty good and now I'm going to press Control X and make a new layer and actually send it below this layer Boris Johnson and uh, press Control V to paste it once again and now I'm actually going to repeat the same process for his left eye now this is slightly more difficult because he's got his eye, old uh, Boris eyelashes uh, interfering ever so slightly but I think we can deal with that by just uh, cutting over them ever so slightly and just pressing Control X once again oops sorry wrong layer going to the uh, Boris Johnson layer doing Control X and uh, getting it onto the layer where his other eye is and now there you go, brilliant, and now grab your magic wand tool and actually go to Boris Johnson's uh, layer and actually press the lasso tool into his eyes. This should actually select the hole where his eyes are missing and have actually been pasted into the layer below. 
Now, while you still have the uh, eye selected, hold control and select the other eye as well. And now make a new layer and uh, get your bucket fill tool. And now, what colour do we want to change Boris Johnson's... <laughs> wow, that looks a bit weird. What colour do we want to change Boris Johnson's eyes into? Now, I was thinking uh, going for a nice yellow because no one's eyes are, are yellow and I feel that kind of stands out as a, a for a tutorial so I'm just going to fill both of these eyes in with yellow with 50% tolerance I think it's fine for this and there you go Boris Johnson has now got yellow eyes now you may be thinking oh god that, that doesn't look natural in any way whatsoever now that is actually because you've not lowered its transparency now you actually got, got to go to the properties button on the layers tab and actually lower the opacity bar until you can still see his eyes uh, but it's not quite as clear as it once was and actually his original eye uh, is still visible beneath and now you actually got to go to effects blurs gaussian blur and blur the eyes out ever so slightly to make them uh, look a bit more natural and to make them look as though they actually blend into his eyes and actually let's just lower ever so let's just lower that okay i think 10 I think that's good we may actually be able to lower the uh, opacity a little bit more and there you go Boris Johnson you've got like greenish eyes at the moment uh, you can actually play around with the opacity now you can go to opacity once again and just raise it again if you want to make it a little bit more yellow that's really frightening I'm not sure about that and actually you can actually go to adjustments and if you don't want to bother with the whole process again you can just go to hue slash saturation and just change around the color however you want and actually look at this he's got really frightening red eyes or pink or whatever look at that pink eyed boris johnson that's what we achieved today ladies and gentlemen now we can actually change the color of things like cars as well if you use the same method now i'm going to speed this up ever so slightly but i'm going to interrupt every now and again to explain to you how i did this now you've actually got to select the entire area of the car and from then i'm going to tell you what's going to be done Now, uh, on average, this does take quite a while, so only do this if you have got a stable hand and a lot of patience. Now, if you're actually zoomed in and you can't actually take your selection any further, you can actually use the add selection tool that I showed you earlier in this tutorial. You can actually go back there by just going to this time. And now just continue selecting it, but this time using the add selection. And once again, the selection has grown too large for me to do, and I'm going to scroll back. I'm going to scroll forward and just click uh, the add selection and continue selecting it like so. And there you go, as you can see I'm just glancing over the actual tyre because uh, that's not actually red so I can just, uh, that can remain the colour that it is. Got to be careful here, this is quite a straight selection, got to keep the shape of that. And there you go, I'm just filling in little patches with more and more uh, little add type selections. Once again, if you've forgotten how to make an add type selection, you just click this selection mode and click add. There you go, got the BMW logo there. Yeah, look at that. And imagine Boris Johnson driving this lovely red car that's actually about to become uh, pink, <laughs> uh, just like his, his eyes that we just changed previously. Now, some of you might actually try to say that um, I could have actually just used the magic wand to select the entire car, but that would just end up as like a really patchy selection that was at, that would actually gloss over a lot of the grey parts of the car and would just look quite ugly in general. So sometimes you've just got to use your hand for these things. Now, it doesn't really matter. 
it's not the end of the world if you actually sort of uh, select too much of the grey parts. If you actually made a massive mistake like this, for example, you can just go to selection mode and go to subtract and just take remove that once again. However, I'm actually going to blur a, l a lot of this uh, new colour out, so that's going to make it look a little bit more natural and you don't really need to worry too much about your hand accuracy. And now, here you go, I've, I've actually got the entire car selected, and now what I can do is press Control X and actually delete the entire car. Now that actually looks quite funny and weird, I might take a photo of that and save it for later. Uh, now I'm actually going to paste it using Control V into a layer above, and I'm actually going to send that layer below. And now I'm actually going to go back to the car layer, uh, press the magic wand and actually select the red once again, because now there's a hole there, and make a new layer with the selection still up. And I'm going to actually uh, make it pink, uh, and actually select the entire damn thing. And now go to properties, and go to opacity, and just lower the opacity right here. And uh, if everything works out, I can now blur it out using blurs, uh, Gaussian blur, just like we did with the eye colour. And just blur it out ever so slightly. And now look at that, you got a wonderful pink car. Um, even though the colours are quite vibrant, but this is actually the best you can achieve uh, without lowering the opacity even further and actually uh, risking going back to red once again. So yeah, I actually think this, that this was quite a cool thing that I showed you guys involving new selections and how to change the colour of things. Uh, next week, uh, well next tutorial really, I'm not sure whether it's going to come out next week or not, but next tutorial is going to be a brand fantastic amazing YouTube exclusive tutorial uh, in which I'm going to show you how to do YouTube stuff like YouTube icons, YouTube channel art and stuff. And it's going to be absolutely fantastic, so keep your eyes on the channel. It might actually come out in two parts because there's just a lot to show you. And after that, I'm actually going to put Boris Johnson into this car. Ah, got, yeah, a bit of a teaser there. So, see you guys in the next tutorial. I hope you find that helpful.